subject is jazz. Gilbert Seldes. This program, The Future of Jazz. With our guests, Dr. Robert Pace of Columbia University and George Russell, composer. Now our host, critic and chronicler of the lively arts, Gilbert Seldes. When you're planning any series of television programs, you always try to keep flexible, allow for possible changes. But the title and the nature of this final program of our series was determined the very moment we began. The one principle to which we were committed was the jazz has a future. We already had testimony on this from Aaron Copeland, a composer in the classic tradition. This program which you'll hear from a teacher and also from a composer. One of those who are quite possibly creating today the forms in which the jazz of the future will appear. Our conference rests on the principle we have observed throughout the series. Jazz is a continually developing legitimate form of musical expression. Its future is not a break with its past. One of the great men of its recent past was Charlie Parker. And our first number today recalls the name by which he was usually known, the bird. It is Billy Taylor's composition, Early Bird. Thank you. 
George Russell, who is here tonight. Recently was commissioned by Brandeis University, and this summer he'll be teaching advanced composition at the School of Jazz at Lenox, Massachusetts. Mr. Russell has developed a highly personal musical idiom. We brought here a quartet, which has frequently recorded his work, joined some of our regular players in first number of his, Concerto for Billy the Kid. Now, Billy, in this case, is not the young bandit of legend, but Bill Evans at the piano. Here is Billy the Kid. Since 
George Russell is a teacher as well as a composer, I don't have to ask him whether he thinks teaching has a function, jazz. What I do want to ask you, George, is just where the number we've just heard fits in in the general structure of your work. Uh, principally, I was trying to uh, convey a feeling of spontaneity, uh, a feeling uh, as though the written music was being improvised. Uh, I employed certain rhythmical techniques, such as uh, superimposing meters, 3-4 on 4-4, four, four, to add to the drive. Uh, however, tonally, I, don't, I wouldn't consider it a, a very adventurous piece. No, uh, I would, but I know that you are associated specifically with adventures in tonality, and I have down the specific thing. I don't understand it, though. The Lydian concept of tonal organization. This I think you must explain. Uh, it would be very difficult to explain the whole concept in this brief period. However, uh, I'll do my best. The major scale is the traditional scale uh, from which jazz and all our Western music has evolved. Uh, the chromatic scale is the scale which most modern music is based on. This is the chromatic scale. Now the problem in jazz today is to evolve into the uh, subtle harmonic and melodic uh, uh, resources that this chromatic scale uh, affords without losing the earthiness and uh, swing that uh, good jazz is characterized by. Mm. Uh, the Lydian concept makes us conscious of tonal gravity. Uh, there are essentially two kinds of tonal gravity. Vertical, that is tonal gravity inferred by the chord, where the chord infers the tonic, mm. and horizontal tonal gravity, tonal gravity inferred by the scale, for instance, a blues scale. a couple of records. I don't know which illustrates which, so you better say. Well, there are certainly two uh, major jazz artists who have these contrasting styles. Coleman Hawkins, for instance, is essentially a vertical, uh, vertically minded uh, uh, soloist. That is, his, his, his melody is dictated by the chord. Mm -hmm. I better hear it. Mr. Young, on the other hand, is uh, more horizontally minded, uh, more scale minded. He imposes a scale on a sequence of chords. Now, George. Um I'm committed to the fact that you are dealing with the future. I ask you, has jazz a future? If America has a future, jazz has a future. The two are inseparable. Well, I won't ask you to predict the future of America, but where does the future of jazz lie? Well, it'll certainly be more adventurous tonally. That is, it'll be more chromatic. It really will be freer in form. It'll be freer, more ambitious. Now, George, if I cut you off, it's only because I know, like most composers, you'd rather have your music speak for you and speak yourself. I think it'd be a good idea if we got back to George Russell about five or ten years from now and see whether his predictions are right. However, at the moment, we're going to play a composition of his called Stratus Funk, and which, the name, as the name implies, is out in the tonal stratosphere. <laughs>
Before our next number, maybe remind you, this is the final program of our series. We'd very much like to have your comments on the subjects we've covered and suggestions as to areas we might deal with in a future series of The Subject is Jazz. In our research for these programs, guided by our consultants, Dr. Marshall Stearns and Leonard Feather, we've assembled a basic list of jazz numbers and jazz records, as well as a reading list of the best books on the subject. These are the foundations of a quite good jazz library, and we'd like to share them with you. A card from you addressed to The Subject is Jazz, Box 450, Radio City Station, New York 19. Requesting a copy of our list will be given our very prompt attention. Now our combined musicians will play a composition by Billy Taylor, which for this performance is called Double Exposure, appropriately because several of the solo parts are being played by two instruments instead of one. Here it is. Thank you. 
We have now come to the end of this pioneering educational series. The subject is jazz. And two things are uppermost in our minds. One is a sense of our great good fortune in having had the chance to deal freely with our subject, to set jazz in some perspective, to define it, and put it in relation to America and to the world. And the other is we'd like to start right at the beginning again and do it all over, correcting our errors by what we have learned. We are particularly aware of these imperfections and errors because we are enthusiasts. We know that we haven't been able to tell the whole story, we probably made some errors of proportion. We hope that you have not found it too difficult to overlook our faults, and that you have shared our satisfaction and the talents of our musicians and guests as they presented one of the great phenomena of contemporary musical life. Thank you and goodbye. Remember to get your copy of our jazz discography and book list. Write to The Subject is Jazz, Box 450, Radio City Station, New York, 19, New York. Now to repeat, for your copy of our jazz discography and book list, write to The Subject is Jazz, Box 450, Radio City Station, New York, 19, New York.